In this lesson, we're going to go over the elements of common law arson, which consists of the malicious burning of the dwelling of another. Four really straightforward elements, we'll be able to get through this lesson fairly quickly. As a starting point for arson, it is important to recognize that common law arson is a malice crime. Remember when we talked about the categories of mental state requirements, we said there was four major categories at common law. We had general intent, specific intent, strict liability, and malice. And in our last couple lessons, we've really been focused on specific intent crimes. Remember our property offenses, larceny, embezzlement, false pretenses, larceny by trick, and robbery, we said were specific intent crimes, right? In order to be liable for any of those offenses, the defendant had to have the specific intent to steal. And then we got to burglary, right? And we said it was a similar idea. With burglary, it's a specific intent crime, which means a common law to be liable for burglary, defendant had to have the specific intent to commit a felony in the dwelling. Right, when we get to arson, it is important to recognize that this is a malice crime. It is not a specific intent crime, which means the defendant can be liable for common law arson, whether the defendant is acting with intent or with reckless disregard of an obvious risk. Right? In other words, intent is not required to be liable for common law arson. We'll see reckless disregard, reckless conduct can be sufficient to satisfy the mens rea requirement for common law arson because common law arson is a malice crime. Right? And this is summed up in our first element, right? We say common law arson consists of the malicious burning, right? When we say malicious, we just mean that either the burning is done with intent or with a reckless disregard of an obvious risk, right? So intentionally burning something is obvious. This is where you would go to a house with lighter fluid and a match, right? You douse the whole house in lighter fluid and then you drop the match, right? That is malicious, right? That's acting with intent to burn. But also reckless disregard of an obvious risk can be sufficient to satisfy the first element, our malice requirement, right? This would be most classically, you know, flicking a lit cigarette bud, right? Somebody is smoking in a dwelling, right? The, the cigarette is lit and without properly extinguishing the cigarette, a person, you know, flicks that somewhere in a trash can or something. Of course, this causes a fire and the whole house burns down, right? That would be the type of reckless disregard of an obvious risk. Anytime somebody's got something inside a dwelling, inside a structure, and that item is on fire and you're just disposing of it without properly extinguishing the item, right? Classically like a cigarette, right? This could be reckless disregard of an obvious risk. You know, it could be yeah, turning on the fireplace, right? Turning on the fireplace or setting the fire with like flammable liquids nearby, right? Not a good idea to store your lighter fluid next to the fireplace, right? So any kind of conduct that is a reckless disregard of an obvious risk of basically starting a fire is also considered malicious, right? The main idea here is it's important to recognize with common law arson, you can be liable, right? A defendant can be liable for common law arson even if they did not intentionally set the fire, right? If their reckless conduct resulted in starting the fire, right? As long as it's reckless disregard of an obvious risk can satisfy our first element. Number two, we need a malicious burning. Burning occurs when structural damage is caused by fire, right? The operative word here is structural damage. A common law to be liable for arson, there has to be actual damage to the structure of the dwelling, right? So say somebody lights a couch on fire in the middle of the family room, right? And the couch disintegrates and melts and there's a lot of damage to the couch, but all the surrounding areas are untouched by the fire. Is that common law arson? The answer is no, because that's not a burning. We need structural damage. The integrity of the structure has to be affected in some way, not just some item burning within the structure. Another classic example would be somebody wants to burn a house down, right? So they pour 
lighter fluid all over a curtain, right? And then they set the curtain on fire and the curtain catches on fire and there's a lot of smoke from this and the smoke billows and discolors the carpet and ceiling and the paint or wallpaper, right? So we have damage to a curtain, we have damage to the carpet, we have damage to right, or discoloration of the wallpaper, right? All of this stuff is not structural damage, right? A curtain being lit on fire is not structural damage. A carpet on top of the floor being singed is not structural, right? Smoke causing discoloration of wallpaper or paint is not structural damage. We need actual structural damage, right? Something that goes to the structural integrity of the dwelling and it has to be caused by fire that's our second element next we need a malicious burning of the dwelling thank you so much for watching this video preview of our legal education accelerator program or leap for short if you would like to see the conclusion of this video and gain full access to our entire 1L and 2L video library, integrated outlines, streamable audio versions, additional practice exams with explanations, and much more, we invite you to head over to our website and join the thousands of law students who have already enrolled. To get started with your no-risk free trial today, simply click the link in the description box below or visit www.studicata.com forward slash leap. Hi everyone, my name is Serena and I'm currently a law student at South Texas College of Law, Houston. Hi everybody, uh, my name is Shiva and I'm currently a law student at Southwestern. Hi everyone, my name is Michelle um, and I am a first year student at South Texas College of Law, Houston. Um, I used the Studicata study video series last semester to help me prepare mostly for contracts um, and I actually made an A plus in contracts last semester which I greatly dedicate to the Studicata video. By using Studicata to help me prepare for my final exam, I was able to score the highest grade out of my class on the final and even have my uh, essay distributed as the model answer. Not to mention I had done quite poorly on the midterm and was struggling throughout the whole course of the semester, understanding the material and keeping up with lectures. Because of the Studicata video lectures, I was able to go into my exams with a feeling of confidence. I didn't have to worry about what the rules of law were or how I was going to organize my answer to an essay question. I would absolutely recommend the Studicata series and their online course materials to anyone. Um, I think that they are not like um, professor lectures that you might find online or other outside study materials that you may encounter. Um, I think that the Studicata videos really focus on not only ensuring that you understand the material that you're going to encounter on your final, um, but they also help you to understand kind of the best method for test taking and they really break down how to approach each problem and the best ways to tackle certain methods on testing um, and I think that's really important and I think it's really special. I don't see that anywhere else um, in any of the other online resources that I've found. So I would certainly recommend Sudakata to anyone who is studying in law school right now. Um, good luck on your studying and you're going to do great. I would definitely uh, recommend Studicata to anybody watching this video. Uh, give it a chance. I'm sure, I'm positive that you will love it, uh, that you will get a lot out of it, uh, and that you will be happy that you gave it a chance. Uh, I definitely am. I know I will be using uh, Studicata in the future. And I cannot thank Studicata enough for getting me through my first semester of law school. I will definitely, definitely continue to watch the Studicata video lectures throughout my law school career. And I highly recommend that any future or current law student do the same.